Your calling is God's choosing, not ours. We weren't given a list to choose from different things we can do. It was God's calling. Calling. This is a term we usually hear in our church community. It is also a word that most of us spend a lot of time thinking and praying about. What does it really mean and how can we be secure in it? Profession is something you choose from a different list of things that you can do and you could be gifted at, but a calling is something from within that God is drawing you in. Welcome to the Leading Together podcast, where we take an inside look at how we develop a leadership culture at Victory and Every Nation Philippines. We believe that leadership is best done together, and that's why we do this podcast. We hope this helps you lead better together. I'm Ryan. I'm part of our creative team in Victory and Every Nation Philippines. And I'm Elle, a campus missionary from Every Nation Campus. We're glad to have you listen to this episode of the Leading Together podcast about calling. The pandemic has given us a lot of time for introspection and self-evaluation. This led to the Great Resignation, which is a term that Anthony Klotz, an associate professor used to describe the record-breaking numbers on resignations and early retirements that are happening worldwide. Many people are shifting careers because of economic reasons or lifestyle changes. The global health crisis we are going through also brought an economic crisis and an existential crisis. You probably have a friend or a relative who resigned or retired recently. With all the transitions happening around us, we usually find ourselves wondering about the direction of our lives. In this podcast, Bishop Jure Mora, a member of our Bishop's Council in Victory, shares his personal stories and principles from the Bible about calling. Good to be here. Good to see friends and uh, workmates and family again. Uh, As much as I enjoyed uh, keeping in touch through social media and through uh, the net, Nothing beats person-to-person, face-to-face uh, 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 meetings. There's just a, there's a whole new context that's always present. The presence of God, uh, uh, the, the presence of each other. Uh, uh, it's, uh, I find it more and more interesting that I find in the Scripture that God chose to use human beings to carry His presence and His grace everywhere we go. Uh, uh, as much uh, as powerful as it is to have been connected through uh, uh, social media and uh, uh, different Zoom calls, uh, it, uh, it's, there's a lot missing compared to just being face to face, getting to pray for each other, getting to listen to each other, and actually uh, bring a tangible presence of God's grace and joy and faith and hope with us. So it's good to be here with you and uh, to see. Uh, some of you and to be connected also through uh, uh, our, our, to those of you who are uh, in the different Zoom rooms. Uh, thank you for uh, being here and continue, continuing to work for the kingdom of God. But we're talking about our calling today. Let me read the scripture with us this morning. Philippians chapter 3 verse 12. We all know this. Uh, Not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took a hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward a goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Lord, we pray this morning that you would continue, that you would uh, indeed uh, 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 forge more uh, deeper into our hearts and in our minds and in our lives your calling and your purpose for us, Lord God, that though things change around us, Lord God, though the circumstances sometimes are uh, so much is beyond our control, we get overwhelmed many times, Lord, with the, with the different things that hit us, Lord, but we thank you that our calling in you never changes, that our calling in you is secure, Lord, that you are the one who destined us, planned for us, a purpose to fulfill even in this world and in the and in eternity to come. In Jesus' name, amen. When I was thinking about this, uh, obviously one of the things uh, that 
came to mind was thinking uh, through the journey of my own calling. And uh, I would say my calling has been uh, uh, tested quite a few times in, 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 in my own life. Uh, I remember ver uh, around uh, uh, the end of my high school days, I, I just had this feeling that I had a calling from God. I, wasn't, uh, I didn't encounter Christ yet then. I was uh, uh, quite religious, but I had this sense of, uh, of, of a calling from God. So after high school, the best that I knew to put that into application was to join the uh, seminary of La Salle. And I served with, uh, with La Salle for two years. And about, about a year and a half through that, I encountered Christ through my dad and uh, through my family that changed me forever. And uh, I remember leaving not because I was disappointed, but because I just felt like God was leading me somewhere else. Can you remember seasons in your life like that? You don't, you can't, sometimes you can't pinpoint the exact thing, but you can't deny that something or someone is leading you somewhere. And I, I made that decision uh, um, around 1984, and I was back and uh, uh, finishing my college degree when I met Pastor Steve in one stormy day in De La Salle University. They were stuck in front of La Salle because it was all flooded. So they decided to walk in. They were planting the church in Manila then, and I met them for the first time, and things began to change in my life. And uh, through them, there were, it became a bit more specific. Now, I, I felt like God was calling me to serve him in ministry. And it became more specific to serve in ministry in the Philippines. So the calling of God, the journey, the clarity uh, was not one time overnight, uh, overnight encounter. But it was walking with him that brought in uh, the, uh, the clarity as we kept, uh, as I kept walking with God then. And the funny thing is, a year later, I find myself on a plane migrating to Australia. So my whole family migrated to Sydney, Australia, 1986. And uh, the temptation to stay there, the, the order, the cleanliness, the beauty, the ease of uh, surviving and, 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 and opportunities for work and advancement was all tempting. And I was, I was getting lulled into it. I thank God for two very crucial meetings um, uh, uh, with Pastor Steve when he went to Australia for a visit. We had a, I was able to sit down with him and he helped me process things that God placed in my heart. So 1989, I find myself on a plane back to the Philippines and I've been here ever since. And things changed in different seasons, but around uh, 1995, uh, my my calling was tested all over again, and uh, it was it was a, a, a season of difficulty, a season of trial, a season of great test, and I was burning out. I was getting tired. Uh, I've I've given myself. I've given all, and it seemed like a dead end. And I thank God. I was uh, I, I, I was. Uh, going through this, I thank God for mentors, for friends, for colleagues, phone calls at crucial points in, in my life, and people who sat down with me and helped me process the, the, the struggles that I went through. And today, I'm still serving God in the ministry, and I thank God for my wife. I thank God for uh, Pastor Steve. I thank God for friends, uh, uh, Bishop Manny, Pastor Jojo Henson, uh, and this uh, uh, out-of-the-blue phone call from Pastor Luther. Uh, that was a big surprise for me. Bagong uh, bago pala yung cellphone phone nun. And I get a phone call from Pastor Luther. Because uh, there's no landline in sa, Iloilo. Sa eh, ma ma mo. But bagong bagong yung cell phone, mo, you get this phone call from Pastor Luther and saying, Kamusta ka, Jeray? And I'm just, uh, I'm just, okay naman. I just want to tell you, we're praying for you. We're standing with you. God is with you. God's doing something in your life. So it's a very, very short phone call. But I thank God for people, friends. And God himself who directed me today. Uh, and in the last few months or the last, uh, what, two, three months, my calling was shaken again uh, with the offer of the early retirement. It, it, is, 
it's, it's, uh, you're thinking sometimes that you've been in the ministry. I've been in ministry for 31 years. You're thinking that sometimes you're, it, it's so sure, it's so secure, but something like this just hit you and it starts and questions start running in your mind. And your calling is out there on the line all over again. And the questions like, is this it? Is this, how, how, how will I do this? Is this where God wants me to be? How, if, if I take this, how will I, how will I uh, go on and, and earn for my family? And all of these questions. Again, I thank God for the season that we're in, that we had the time to seek God and pray and get back into the Word. And I also thank God for friends that despite the season, they have time for you. That they pray with you. That they help you walk through what God has in store for you. So this last few months has shown me, uh, has reminded me of how precious our calling is from God. I thank God that God has put me where He's planned me to be. And I'd like to share those things that I consider that brings our calling to a certain degree of preciousness or treasure or pricelessness compared to anything else in the world. And the first one is our, our calling is God's choosing. The Apostle Paul says there's a reason God took a hold of him. There's a reason God's will and uh, it's God's will and God's purpose. If you notice, the Apostle Paul didn't make an offer to God and at one point in his life, hey Lord, I'm just tired of just doing this in persecution. Can you give me something else? In the midst of him, with, uh, with, 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 uh, with, the own, uh, with his own hatred and anger towards the church, God's encounter with him changes everything. Your calling is God's choosing, not ours. We, didn't, we, we weren't given a list to choose from different things we can do. It was God's calling. It was, there's something, uh, that, that it looks general, but there's something very specific about it. Because it's God's calling. I'm, I'm beginning to realize that, that, that a profession is something you choose from a different list of things that you can do. And you could be gifted at. But a calling is something from within that God is drawing you in. In fact, the word vocation means to call. And God is drawing or drawing you to something. When you think about the journey that men and women of God had to take to get to their calling and purpose, it's amazing how God brings them into it. It wasn't like as if, all right, you're, you're gifted, I'm provided for you, and everything is just easy. It's, it's amazing the many detours. <clears throat> when you look at it, you could think they were detours, but God was in charge because God chose it. Think about the Apostle Paul. From persecutor to apostle. If you think about a detour, I couldn't find a greater detour than that. A greater change of heart, change of mind, and change of life. If there was a miracle, that is a miracle. Think about Moses from being extremely gifted. He had to get to a place where he felt he was nothing so he could be drawn into his gifting and calling. It's amazing how God changes everything. Think about Joseph from being a slave to a prisoner to the second highest ranking official. And all through those seasons, when you, th when you think about it, some of those words and things that was declared over Joseph's life sometimes doesn't make sense because it's very clear in the scripture that when he was a prisoner, God was with him and God blessed him. And you're wondering, wow. When he was a slave, it says God was with him. God's favor was with him. And the, and the scripture said, described him as God blessed him. Can you imagine having a webinar today? Listen to this man who's a slave. 
and a successful slave at that. Because God blessed him and God's with him. I wonder how many will sign up and listen. Or another seminar, listen to the best prisoner. Let him tell you the secrets of being blessed. I wonder how many will sign up. But God has the ability to take your situation and turn it around to lead you to where he wants you. Not because it's your choice, but because from the very beginning it was his choice. Sarah, from a barren woman to a nation and even nations. Those are, I have so many questions. Lord, if you wanted a nation, why did you choose a barren woman? Lord, if you wanted to make great nations, why did you choose to do it the natural way, yet do it a miraculous way at the same time? Esther, from an ordinary girl to the queen. Jonah, from a reluctant missionary to a revival leader, in a sense. These men were going about their lives, not knowing that God was in charge and that God was doing something in their lives. God called and used men and women from different backgrounds, giftings, and status in life. Interestingly, God's calling was decided upon, was decided even before they could prove any worth to the mission or to God himself. Reminds me of the prodigal son. Remember the prodigal son when he came back? The father said, kill the fattened calf. Let's celebrate. Bring the, bring the fattened calf here. Kill it and let's celebrate. The father was throwing a special celebration to a son who has not yet proven the reality and the sincerity of his repentance. When the people that God used, when you and I finally choose and embrace the call of God, I realized that impossible circumstances could not stop it. Evil intentions did not stop the calling of God. Personal blunders and rebellion could not even stop it. Extreme giftedness or a lack of abilities could not stop it. Extreme poverty or extreme wealth could not stop it either. Geography, weather, whatever else, nothing stops the calling of God. Many times we, can, we, we, we ask the question, why? Why David? Why Paul? Why Moses? Many times we ask ourselves, why me? Some of you read the book. Why me? Why? I only have one answer. Because it's God's calling. Because it's God who called. You and I have a call from God and in God, that nothing, uh, and nothing can stop. The impossibilities can change. Evil cannot prevent it. It is God's will for us. It is God's purpose for us. Secondly, our calling is a precious treasure. Priceless, actually. The Apostle Paul said, I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took a hold of me. Before this verse is... In the previous verses, the Apostle Paul says, I consider everything I have a loss. All my status, my learning, my position, my success. I consider everything a loss compared to knowing Christ and pursuing this uh, purpose. Paul put an extreme value on his calling. It was worth everything. It's, it's, it's funny that he gave up everything. But he gave everything as well. The calling of God is not cheap. Your calling, my calling, our calling had to be paid for on the cross. It's only for you and uh, uh, for you and no one else. You can't sell it to anyone. You can't pass it on to anyone. It may look similar. Our callings have similarities. 
But there's a great uniqueness to each one. Your calling is treasure. It's priceless. God has placed his best investment into it. It changes everything we do in our world. I realized a few things. My job is precious not because it pays me, but because it's the place of my calling. My marriage and family are important because they are my partners in my calling and their lives are my calling. You are precious friends because you are the people God has called me to walk with. The mission is important. Not because of success, not because of the fame we can, we can bring, but because it's our calling. We can earn plenty of money, but without our calling, it is empty. I have friends who pursued greener pastures. They're actually very wealthy and, su and successful. But all they can talk about is the pressure at work, the new toy they have, and the dream vacation they're hoping to get. In fact, it's funny because they were telling me uh, many years ago, I brought my family, we visited friends and family in Australia, and some of them sat me down and said, Jure, look at what we have if you just stayed here. And I look at them and I say, and I, one time I just made fun of it. Nakakatawa, no? Ang dami niyo yung dream vacation, pero ako nakakabakasyon kayo, hindi. On the other hand, I also have friends who migrated to greener pastures, but their heart is still in their calling. And it makes a whole difference when you talk to them. They can talk to you about, uh, they don't talk about the pressures at work. They talk about the joy of serving God. They just work, they work just as hard, but they're more joyful than some of them who just have good toys and good things. Now, please don't get me wrong. I'm not saying don't go for greener pastures, but I realize this, that the pasture in the other side may be greener, but that's not my calling. And your calling makes a whole difference, a whole lot of difference where you are. Lastly, our calling is a lifetime pursuit. Not that I have already obtained all this. One thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is, a, what is ahead, I press on toward a goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. The Apostle Paul most likely wrote this when he was in jail. His life, he, he, he was facing a life and death situation. He was facing, in a sense, the reality that this could be the tail end of his life. Yet you still hear him saying, I haven't finished. I'm still pursuing it. If all I have is a one more week, I'm still pursuing it because it's not yet done. The calling of God is a lifetime pursuit. Things may change around us. Circumstances, seasons may change. But the calling is the same. Geography may change. Things we do may change. Yet the calling remains the same. Our calling is something we should never let go. Our calling is in a sense, the context, the lenses we use to look at our world. The Apostle Paul, despite the many trials and tests, did not let go till the end. Persecution, rejection, failures, flogging, incarceration, and death. Yet he kept pursuing the call of God. As I close, let me appeal to all of us. Do not let the circumstances today, tomorrow, or any time for the rest of your life tell you what the status of your calling is.
instead are calling something we should pursue for the rest of our or rest of our lives pursue god and pursue his calling he chose you he's given you something that's priceless let's hold on to it till we finish what god's called us to do let us pray lord i thank you lord god for choosing us lord god lord if we look at our own lives lord god we can surely ask the question why me why did you entrust me with this why did you put me where i am why did you do this for me and for us why it's because you just gave it lord god you chose it it's a gift it's something we can give our life to so i pray for all of us here Lord, for the grace, for the joy, for the desire to pursue your calling for each one of us for the rest of our lives. Lord, let that passion for your calling for you be even imparted to our family and friends and for those who are around us. In Jesus' name. That message from Bishop Jure really helps us see our lives more clearly. God's Word is indeed a light to our path. It also reminds us that as Christians, what God calls us to do is the major deciding factor in our lives. And the most secure place we can be is where God wants us to be. What a comforting thought. To help us apply this message, here are some discussion questions. 1. Who are the people who can help you walk securely in God's calling? And two, is there someone you know who is seeking direction or is about to make a big life decision? How can you encourage that person? We hope this message inspired you to keep pursuing God and walk by faith. Thanks for listening. If you would like to continue to talk about this, you can discuss this with your Victory Group leader. If you're not part of a Victory Group yet, you can visit victory.org.ph to find a church near you and get connected. If this has been helpful for you, or if you think of someone who can be encouraged by this podcast, you can share this with them and discuss it together. See you in the next episode of Leading Together.